Hello and welcome to Straight Talk. I'm Mandy McLeod. In this edition, in the good old US of A, they're working hard to keep young people down on the farm by actively encouraging them to make farming a career. What top tips can we learn from our American colleagues? A visiting expert from Iowa shares his knowledge about the future of farming in the United States. And we explore research, development and extension for the agricultural community. We ask if farmers in New Zealand are using it enough to feed their success. But first up, over in Iowa, USA, back in 1994, state politicians got together with Iowa State University to set up a beginning farmer centre so they could grow the next generation of farmers. Here's how it works. Throughout Iowa, we have retiring farmers that might be five to ten years from, reti from retirement that would like to see their farm businesses go into the future. In order to do that, we need to find young people that would like to join that retiring farmer and take over his farm business. Iowa State University Extension has the Beginning Farmers Center. As a farm transition specialist, I am always working with farm families, trying to match up these two parties so that we can keep the farm businesses going into the future. Well, after a lot of thought and consideration, we decided we were going to move out of farming. And so we finally found the ISU Beginning Farmer Center and started working with Dave Baker. Dave informed us of the tax incentives that are available to farmers like myself who are willing to turn their farming operations over to young beginning farmers. Dave has facilitated our search in, in finding some young farm families who are willing to take over our farming operation. The Farm On program is a computerized database of young people that would love to have an opportunity to farm. They've contacted me with applications and telling me what their background is, their experience, and their education. I try and take that application to retiring farmers that would love to have a young person, young family, join them on the farm and we try and match up those two parties so that we can keep those farm businesses in place and ongoing. Well, it was great to be able to work with Dave Baker and the ISU Extension Service and the Beginning Farmer Center in having help in finding a farm that my family could move into. It was great to have the assistance in being able to locate a farm of this type and also all the support from the retiring couple. The Beginning Farmers Center works hard to help keep Iowa's farms thriving and assist farmers in the difficult generational transition. It's just another great way that ISU Extension is here to help Iowans. Joining me now to tell us more is Dr. John Baker from Iowa State University and the Honourable John Luxton, Chair of Dairy New Zealand. Welcome. John, can you tell us a little bit more about what it is you do? Well, I'm an attorney and I work for Iowa State University Extension Service and I administer a Beginning Farmer Center. And at the Beginning Farmer Center, we're looking at uh, ways of helping uh, young people get involved in agriculture if they uh, didn't pick their parents wisely enough to inherit a farm. So we have a little project called Farm On that links up uh, an existing farmer who has no heirs that want to farm with a young person that wants to get into farming. We also uh, do a lot of work with uh, family farms in uh, helping them create uh, farm business succession plans, bringing uh, sons and daughters back into the farm business. Uh, we provide one-on-one -on -one consultations with those folks and we do a lot of uh, educational seminars around the state of Iowa, indeed around the United States and, and around the world. Uh, talking on those issues uh, and we uh, have done a lot of research in this area including a uh, farm transfers research project that's an international research project and we now have 17,000 replications of a survey instrument looking at farm succession so our seminars are very much research based and, and uh, we try to address what uh, farmers have told us their concerns are about moving farm businesses generationally. And all this is funded by Iowa State? It is. Uh, when we uh, created the Beginning Farmer Center back in 1994, Iowa uh, the Iowa legislature uh, earmarked a $100,000 
uh, to uh, the beginning farmer center to uh, operate it. And with that, we hire one full-time employee, a, a part-time employee, and uh, then the rest we use for uh, uh, research and education. Mm -hmm. John Luxton, given that the same issues exist here in New Zealand, what opportunities do you think there are to, you know, to utilise a model that John's just described? Yeah. I think we're doing probably mu much of the same things, but in a whole variety of different ways. We start in the schools, uh, agri-kids. Uh, we work through uh, into the... Um, uh, AG ITO, so there's a whole series of things going and also into the universities and a lot of the funding for that is coming through uh, Dairy NZ uh, and it's paid for by the farmers. So there is really a focus on getting young people uh, enthused and involved in our dairy industry. We've talked, like we've seen the Go Dairy campaign on TV and it depicts rather a nice life and some pretty good career aspirations. <laughs> Yet I've heard some criticism that it may not show the real picture of what it's yeah. like to be a dairy farmer. Yeah. What sort of feedback are you getting yeah. from the people that have come up through that? Uh, generally positive. Uh, I mean, it's, people don't make a decision on the basis of a TV ad. So there's a lot of people coming in at different levels. And uh, by and large, I think the response has been pretty positive. It does depend a little bit on the employer, employee, and, and matching that up properly. Uh, it also depends on the focus of the individual. Do they really want to go farming? Uh, and, and it's putting these things together. And so through Ag ITO, there's a lot of work goes on with advisory people helping to match both those farmers and, and, and the employee. John Baker, in your experience, what are the barriers that you see to young farmers wanting to come in and be farmers? Well, I think the, the biggest barrier is just locating an entry opportunity, and that's because uh, many farmers never really think about retiring. Indeed, our international research project identified two critical factors. Uh, the first one was transfer of management, so we uh, don't wind up with uh, what uh, my uh, colleague at the University of Plymouth, England, the late Andrew Arrington, referred to as the farmer's boy, who is the 65-year-old farmer whose 87-year-old father still runs the farm. And the other one is uh, we're all living longer and not retiring. Uh, uh, and uh, with the technology, uh, we can uh, stay out there on the farm longer. Uh, we have a joke in Iowa that uh, when uh, farmers get too old to get up in the big equipment, they buy smaller equipment and uh, stay out there. So those are the two really critical factors in, the, in it. It's, uh, you have to give people the opportunity to learn how to manage a farm business and, uh, in a systematic way, and then you have to get out of the way and let them do it. John Luxton, what do you think the issues are that's preventing people to actually want to enter into, let's talk about dairying, because that's your background, mm, yeah, yeah. enter into dairying as a career before, they e before we even really go into business continuance succession? Yeah. Uh, I think probably some false information. I mean, this happens to be New Zealand's uh, internationally most competitive industry. Uh, it's really successful. It's great opportunities for young people. Uh, and it should be attracting the best and the brightest uh, of, of young New Zealanders. And we are attracting a large number of those. So I wouldn't be too pessimistic about it. I think actually we are succeeding. We've got a lot of uh, university graduates coming back into farming, uh, second careers, uh, as well as people coming up through the schooling system, doing ag ITO, doing the courses. And we actually have the succession uh, routes into, into farming in New Zealand with um, management jobs. You can start at the base, and get into management, get into contract milk and get into share milk and get into equity partnerships. And a lot of the larger farms now provide that channel of entry for really motivated young people to get into dairying. I want to come back um, after the break and talk a bit more about this whole area of, of succession. Last week I was at uh, a conference in Australia and I was asked to present a paper looking at the reason why research and development was not being taken up on farms. Mm. And one of the things that was really obvious to me was segmentation of the industry. John Baker, I'll start with you to start with. Do you think that when we plan our extension programs, we segment the market enough or are we still trying to pitch to the average farm? 
That's a really good question. I think one of the things that we often run into in, in extension, at least in Iowa, I can only speak about my experience in Iowa, is that we're still uh, working with people on a lot of production issues and uh, perhaps uh, financial <laughs> management issues. Now, both of those are very, very important. Obviously, you, you, you have to produce, and with uh, margins that tighten up the way they have over the past uh, 25 years or longer, you have to be a good financial manager. Uh, but having said that, I don't think we spend enough time just talking about management in general. Uh, people learn how to farm, then they learn how to manage. Can I just, can I just interrupt you? Because I just want to um, quickly talk to, to John Luxon before we go to the break. John, do you think, from a Dairy NZ point of view, when you run an extension program, that you actually segment the market in terms of your delivery? Yeah, I think, I think we're getting better at that. Uh, and it depends on the message we want to get through, whether it's about the environment, whether it's about farming in tight times, uh, or whether it's about quality. There's a whole series of areas that we are segmenting now. But also, uh, it's a bell-shaped curve. Uh, and we focus on those who are really going to make a difference. The others will come along eventually. When you say a bell-shaped curve, I mean, in my experience, um, and, and certainly some of the criticism that I, that I would hear is around that we're not dealing enough with the early adopters. So it would be interesting mm. to talk to you a bit more um, about this bell-shaped curve when we come back from the break. Coming up, we're going to take a look at business continuation. How can we ensure a vibrant, viable agri-industry in the future? What does the American agricultural sector look like? And what are the major policy decisions that affect our ability to farm? Stay with us. Welcome back to Straight Talk. When I completed my Nuffield Scholarship in Business Continuance and Succession Planning two years ago, Dr John Baker was one of the international experts I consulted. So let's now find out his definition of business continuance. Well, to move any business, you have three things in a business. You have management, you have money, and you have assets. And all of those, has to move, all of those have to move one more generation if you're going to keep that business viable. Historically, we've done a good job with asset transfer. We, uh, whether that's through uh, sales uh, or gifts, uh, the same tools we use in estate planning were fully developed during the reign of Henry VIII. We know how to move property. I doubt there's any property in New Zealand that, that nobody knows who owns it. There mm -hmm. certainly isn't any in Iowa. Mm -hmm. So we're good at that. We're good at paying people. We know how to move salaries. Uh, we can pay uh, 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 on an annual compensation, incentive pay, a portion of the gross, a portion of the net. We, we're very good at that. What we haven't been good at, though, is moving management and systematically thinking about what do we, where do we start someone in this educational process. And part of it is because I don't think we use the right terminology. We tend to talk about farmer and successor or farmer and son or farmer and daughter. Mm -hmm. But if we think, at it from, think about it from a business point of view, we're really talking about a manager and an assistant manager, a management trainee. And so I think we need to go back and, and begin thinking about this from a business point of view. And what, if you were hiring somebody to manage your business, what would be the first things you would have them do? What areas of responsibility? How would you hold them accountable? Uh, those kinds of things. And then, especially in family businesses, making sure that we understand that, the, that what we describe as a family and what we describe as a business are two different things. Mm -hmm. So it's fine to be a father and son at Christmas time. It's not if you're in the lender's office trying to negotiate a loan. You're a business partner mm -hmm. and you should treat each other as such. Mm -hmm. So I think this whole idea of moving the business entity and thinking about it from a business point of view, but, but most importantly, moving management. And the other thing is, setting a timeline for when you're going to retire. Because if you never retire, you'll have an heir, but you won't have a successor. Thanks, John. I think you've just about answered all the questions that I had. <laughs> John, what do you think the issues are here in New Zealand around succession? And, and actually, I'm going to stop using the word succession because I hate it. To me, succession uh, implies that we're looking at asset transfer with, with, with a tax you know, a tax derivative or someone's about to die. So I'd like to use the word business continuance. Yeah. What do you think the main issues in New Zealand? Well, I think you've got a couple of things happening at the same time. 
One is the amalgamation of farms, and so that is blocking opportunities for many people. But systems are becoming more and more complex, and so the skill level is having to increase all the time. And I think mm. we recognise that. And we actually, when you look at the Dairy Industry Awards, which are currently on, there's some fantastic opportunities out there and people hugely successful and motivated out there. Uh, so whilst there are older farmers who are going to farm until uh, they fall off the perch, quite frankly, I think that we're better off than many countries, particularly in the dairy industry. There's a continual succession of young people coming in and highly motivated young people. So it's a great opportunity for people today. Fantastic. John, what are the major policy decisions that are impacting farmers um, or farm business owners' ability to manage their businesses? It's the absolute fear of paying any kind of tax ever. And we have farmers who, we have an expression, we say in Iowa, farmer would rather die than pay taxes, so they do. <laughs> and it's this fear of federal estate tax that really impacts very, very few farms. And, and so uh, they have uh, structured their businesses and estate plans in certain ways to avoid taxes that they may or may not have been subjected to that really hamstrings them in other ways in terms of moving business, portions of the business forward. So, so that's one of the big problems. Um, there, there is also uh, in many places a uh, uh, a desire to to control the use of farm assets after our death. I once said that 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 I think that for some farmers in the U.S., when the Lord created the universe and the earth, uh, he put his finger down and he said the Smiths are going to farm this. It just took them several million years to show up to farm it. So they never want to sell it. They don't want to ever lose it. And so they are really putting in tr land in trust and with restrictions on it so that next generation can't do what they need to do with that yeah. asset, yeah. which may be sell part of it to make the rest of it more yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, profitable. So, John, what do you think the issues are here in New Zealand, the major policy issues yeah. that affect us? Well, I, th I think it's uh, really the licence from the rest of society to be able to continue to farm. Uh, and a recognition by the rest of society that farming is so important to the New Zealand economy. Uh, and in those areas, I think we have some work to do. I think that the farming sector itself, though, is making great strides in, in that whole area that people are unaware of. Uh, so a lot of the concerns that you read in the paper actually aren't in existence on many of, many of our farms today. They are run as businesses and as very profitable businesses, and they are looking at the next generation and how they will be farmed. 2030, John Luxton, what's, what's it going to be like to farm in New Zealand? Uh, it'll be a great uh, place to be farming. Um, we're one of the few countries in the world that actually exports the majority of its production. Uh, you know, 95% of dairy products are exported to the rest of the world. Population internationally is growing, so it's a great time to be in food production and an even better time to be in dairying in New Zealand. Well said. Any regulation issues that you can think of that may be there? Oh, in the abso next? Absolutely. ETS is a, is a challenge mm -hmm. for us. But again, the research we're doing gives us a leadership position there. Uh, likewise, water is going to be a big challenge, both in quantity and quality. But again, I think we're ahead of the game in that area. I liked the fact that, that, you, you, that you used the term um, the, the licence to farm from our community and I think that's a really, um, a really nice way of summing up, I think probably from what I understand, some of the international issues yeah. surrounding farming and, and the production of food. It's not just the community, it's also the consumer. So, and mm. the consumer, mm. yes, and that's probably mm. in some cases more important, yes. isn't it? Coming up after the break, we asked the two Johns if they have a rant or a rave find out what pushes their buttons when we return after the break. Welcome back to Straight Talk. Now it's time for a rant <laughs> or rave. OK, lads, what have you got for us? I get to go first? Yeah, yeah okay. absolutely. <laughs> You're the visitor. Well, I... Uh, I can think of lots of things to rant about, but one of the things that I uh, I'll call it very much I'm concerned about is the lack of uh, research in farm succession. Uh, we have, uh, and it's so spotty around the world, 
and uh, we really need to be asking farmers what the issues are that they see as opposed to uh, someone else uh, trying to convince them that's an issue. So, uh, and then where we have research that's been done, we need to begin applying that that we know about our countries, about our industries, and we need to be applying those in an edu into educational formats to reach producers on the farm and help them make better decisions about their lives. That's something that is not being done, at, to my knowledge, enough anywhere in the world. Well, maybe you guys need to get together after the break and have a chat about this being, uh, being you representing a major fund. That John Luxton, you got a rant or a rave for me? Well, I think a, a, a rave about the fact that we actually we've got science and research and development all coming up in the dairy industry. There's a huge focus now on this whole area behind the farm gate. How do we solve some of these challenges? And we've really rebuilt the, the, the research team and we're recruiting new scientists in a whole lot of areas that almost died. And on top of that, extension is now starting to be taken seriously again on farm. So I think we're in a very good space. And what's more, we're attracting many, many really motivated young people into New Zealand's top industry, the dairy industry. Gosh, you're a positive man, John Luxton. Yeah, it's just what I like to see. John Baker, you got a, rant, a rave for us? You've given us your rant? Well, I think it's the number of young people that want to come back into farming. The, the, uh, there's been uh, predictions of demise of the family farm for over 100 years, and it's probably yeah. the most resilient organization Absolutely. that there is and one of the most dynamic and uh, has some of the best managers in the world in it. So... Uh, I guess this would be the obverse side of my rant would be the rave of uh, all of the good young people that are coming into it and the interest, the keen interest there is throughout the world now in farm succession. We just need to, to capitalize on that with the research and then the education that follows. Well, I've got a wee rant that I wanted to share with you because I was sitting down and I was looking at some of the results uh, from the Dairy Environments Awards and I was starting to think about the hypocrisy that exists sometimes in our industry. And what comes to mind would be Alan Crafer as a classic example. When I first started out, uh, he was held up as a hero of, you know, breaking in farms, taking empty cows and taking them through, and he was heralded by the industry as being, you know, quite revolutionary. Now he's pretty much a pariah. Um, and I look at some of the people that uh, have won Dairy Environment Awards and what they have done in a previous life, uh, sending other people broke who may have invested with them. And so I have a real concern that maybe we are not choosing our heroes wisely enough and that there are too many unsung heroes out there who are actually getting on and doing the work and aren't being recognised for it. It tends to be the squeaky wheel gets the grease, whether they're good or bad. And I have a real concern about that. Um, so that, that's my, my rant. And my rave is, as always, New Zealand agriculture, we are amazing. When I travel around the world and I look at what we've got, we have got it all right here in this little country of ours. And we've got so much to be proud of. And I don't think we celebrate our successes well enough. Yeah. Now, I would like to thank you guys so much for being on the show. You've added a, a slice of flavour. Thank especially to you, um, Dr John Baker, for coming all the way from Iowa to be on the show. And I look forward to hearing you speak next week at the International Farm Management Conference. And John Luxton, as always, a pleasure. Thank you for making time in your busy schedule. Thank you. That's it for this edition of Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Furrow. Again, I'd like to thank my guests John Luxton, Chair of Dairy NZ, and Dr John Baker, visiting from the Iowa State University. And of course, I'd like to thank you for watching. For more information, check out my blog on country99tv.co.nz. I look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, keep on talking straight. We'll see you next time. <laughs>